as um, an overview that small scale fisheries is known to be contributing 90% to the 120 million jobs that are in existence. And those jobs, um, they may be seasonal, but they are um, supporting livelihoods nonetheless. Some use a multiplier factor saying billion people depending on fisheries and in all these fisheries um, activities they there are no records or records are scarce because they are still based on paperwork kind of monitoring of what's happening if they are any kind of monitoring so no one is clear about how many fishing vessels how many fishers exactly are there and how many women are there and the labor issues in when all these fisheries what amount of them relates to forced labor and things like that, which is one of the things that is being dealt with by uh, the meeting in Cape Verde as part of these celebrations or commemoration of World Fisher Day. And when you look in the total um, supply, 55% uh, of the value um, is derived from small-scale fishers, largely from uh, developing countries. And in terms of quantities, it's almost 60 percent. So you can say in total, most of the fish that is consumed globally comes supplied by small-scale fish in one form or the other. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, the, there's a recent study that was done uh, which shows that 80 percent of the fish that is supplied out there only knows the state of those resources, whether they are fished sustainably or not in terms of being informed by research. And there's the, also the human aspect of things. Where do people fit in all these? Uh, what are the trickle-down benefits related to these um, quantities that are supplied? And most of the, the records that speak to these gaps that are in existence is because they are kept in paper format that are lost, or largely because there's no digital backup or whatever that is there. And some of the technologies that are being brought now into small-scale fisheries or that are increasingly being absorbed have been <coughs> mostly mechanization of the operations. And particularly from fishing all the way to, to the supply, to the supply chain. But one of the aspects is that there's lots of loss of life relating to not being able to track where fishers are, as well as informing fishing activities around the elements at sea. So now technology is coming into play to assist with the, either the onboard navigation systems or the portable ones that can be connected and disconnected. And that is, in some of the countries, is being piloted for use, and also in South Africa, that is one of the things that are, that are happening. But South Africa is not the only one in Africa that is now adopting technology. In Kenya, the uh, Vodacom has been actually spearheading the, the use of technology in different industries, which now include also fisheries. It was mostly in the dairy industry, where smallholder producers, and then they moved into uh, the supply of fruits and all that. But then, it's, in, in essence, it's being adopted by across. In South Africa, I think it's, it's Abalobi that is in use, but that is more than the mobile technology, although there are other supporting um, elements on that. And they, when, when you look at what are the, the, the benefits, because most of these technologies are brought in from the side of improving or developing fisheries, there's an, a broader um, analysis that is used where you look at the political benefits, the economic benefits, the social aspects, and the technological development aspects. Uh, so when, when you, it's not broadly used, most of the time when they talk about um, sustainable development, it's mostly focusing on those four, social, economic, and environmental, or three actually. But it's slightly broader than that, which is what we'll, we'll maybe look at. And one of the other benefits is the, the higher returns because it tends to shorten the, the supply or the value chain because of removing middlemen 
that are involved. South Africa is that is the case. The, the supply chain of fish has involved lots of middlemen, particularly when you look at small scale fisheries. Uh, the Langanas, particularly in the Western Cape. And then you, nobody really knows, or fishers do not really have much influence on the value or the prices of that they get from the fish that they supply. And then there's other aspects that come with this, like the, particularly with mobile technology, the traceability of the supplied fish as well as the data collection or the accumulation, which on its own is now increasingly becoming a market globally, that whoever that owns the data um, owns the market. And then from among a lot of small scale fishers, there's a I think that small scale um, data or the use of the data in small scale fishing sector is now assisting in the domestication of the voluntary guidelines, particularly on the human rights um, based approach to small scale fisheries and um, also the reduction of disasters at sea because now some of these technologies are integrated with weather monitoring or emergency alerts should the environment change at sea. <coughs> and I heard that in Australia they are integrating the catches with um, the, the, the estimated value of the, of the fish that is caught so that there's persistent records that are linked to a financial institution. Oh. Okay. Then there are, there are some challenges because largely in Africa, the literacy level is not really up high there. So when some of these um, technologies are brought in, there's a concern around the information, how it's being used, by whom, to what extent, and whether fishers are ready to assimilate or participate effectively. So, because for example, in some of these countries, they don't have the the GPS enabled phones to to know about where their fish is, like particularly tracking the line, as well as some technical technical aspects of the the these uh, these solutions. And then there's the the issue of the push of for efficiencies. What exactly does it mean? Is it now pushing fishers to play in the a highly capital intensive market where the supply does not matter whether they work through uh, around the clock or not then you have those pressures that the fish needs to be at a certain standard consistently it does not matter whether they are able to, to, to supply that or not and linked to that is the contract that high quality fish is demanded consistently because now they are dealing with this. With the fear now of losing some of those markets, some of the, the fishers I had, like some of these ones in, in Belize, then they are threats now to the sustainability because they now have to keep up to honor their, their agreements. But on the same side, within South Africa, the observation has been that the fishing pressure has been reducing. So it's uncertain because, like, it's reducing because they are able to make the same amount of money where in they were required to fish bigger volumes now because they are improving the quality it's changing a little bit but it's uncertain whether that will be set the enable uh, aspect going forward and then yeah now the, the other fear is then the integration into the bigger economies which in south africa there's been a negative benefit for small scale fishers where you ended up having fishers being reduced to paper um, or armchair fishers or paper quota holders when they don't have the facilities and the infrastructure now everybody else who has it has to fish on their behalf and then there's the, the aspect that deals with the expected capital from fishers that if you want to participate in these um, in sectors you need to have the, the infrastructure and the capital which some of them do not have and then Particular affecting that is the, the level of penetration because some say they are benefiting 
while others they say they are not benefiting because those ones who are able to talk and who are articulate, they tend to take all the benefits and then those ones who are at the lower uh, levels in the communities, they then um, are kept in the dark. And then there is also the how bankable are some of these uh, features that are out there. For some of them they do not have bank accounts and they often relied on any hand uh, exchange. So then that is one of the things which others are not having bank accounts because of fears. And now with this they then get pushed out of this um, sector. Then there's also, which is, has been demonstrated in India, that women and some of the youths, they get actually chucked out um, of these because Particularly women, it's mostly men that benefit when technology is introduced. Why? Because most of the time, access to the infrastructure for technology, like smartphones, in traditional communities where all small-scale fishers exist, there's that un unfair or inequal access to these resources. So then the introduction or the adoption of technology then creating some unintended consequences of pushing women deeper into poverty and out of the, the fishery. And then in other areas they, they report that small scale fishers, the, there's an increase in unemployment because some of the fishing activities that small scale fishers were involved in, in the chain they are now getting replaced by shortening the chain. And I think those are some of the things that um, need to be, to be looked at, particularly with, with this technology. And um, although there's expected benefit in terms of balancing power, now the one who enables others to get into the chain are now the one, the new centers of power, which in, in other countries is becoming a little bit problematic because power shifts from the fishmongers that's now resting with this one who now controls the direct access to the market. And then there's the part of how appropriate is this technology? I think in, in Africa, the internet penetration, it, it's around 30%, which means the large part of Africa is not really um, ready for adoption of some of these technologies. And then it's the part now that deals with the affordability of fish. One of the, the things from different fishers, small scale fishers that have interacted with from outside South Africa and even South Africa is that because of the high quality of the fish, it becomes expensive and no longer accessible locally, which now push the, the fish supply. Um, and one, it destroys the local fish supply chain or where you have fish for local consumption and now pushing the fish to the upmarket places. Um, like that, for example, around the Great Lakes. Some of the people cannot eat the, the fish that is caught there because it's highly expensive. And in South Africa, there are also those observations that even some of those fishes that were considered to be low value species, because now it has entered this formal chain, it's no longer affordable and accessible. And then, brings us to the question of the discussion, how does technology influence food security and food accessibility? And then the lack of regulation of the technologies that are being uh, brought in. And yeah, that is roughly it. Uh, I think I, I won't go through this, but technology is here. <coughs> and it's, it's here to stay because it's now affecting all of us in most of our activities. And it shows that there are some discussions that we need to have in relation to small-scale fisheries and particularly their development and their well-being with them. Because imposed, uh, some, some of the imposed solutions, like you were saying, that, for example, regulations in small-scale fisheries is considered to be one of those things that were imposed, including the, the way um, co-ops will be structured and whether you, if you don't comply with that, then you are out. And then, um, yeah, I think we need to maybe also discuss how this is now responding towards poverty, whether it's now assisting in poverty alleviation or availability or unavailability of fish. Besides that, fish has generally been expensive for most fish, for most people in South Africa, but now with technology now pushing that 
fish to be even more expensive. Uh, it's not only the technology, but also from the way it's handled and now the way it's accessed and all that. And then we also need maybe to look at how the policies and the guidelines that are in existence are keeping up with these uh, developments so that fishers are not marginalized and you do not create new centers of power in communities. And yeah, the participatory nature of uh, fishers in, 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 the, in that uh, space.